Tonight, the state of play on immigration is anything but clear. Parents arrested at the southern border are still trying to reunite with their children. Congress is still searching for an overall solution, and President Trump is still talking tough. White House correspondent Yamiche Alcindor begins our coverage. These are the American citizens permanently separated from their loved ones. The president sought today to shift the focus from families separated at the border to the families of people killed by undocumented immigrants. They're not separated for a day or two days. They are permanently separated because they were killed by criminal illegal aliens. As he has before, he also falsely linked the larger migrant community to those who commit crimes. You hear it's like they're better people than what we have, than our citizens. It's not true. The White House event followed fierce criticism of the president's zero tolerance policy. It's continued even after he ordered a halt to separating children from their parents, more than 2,300 since early May. According to the Associated Press, 500 of the separated children have since been reunited with a family member. But advocates for the others say they're desperately trying to find children who've been relocated to shelters and foster care across the country. Federal officials are said to be organizing a centralized reunification process in South Texas. And the Pentagon is preparing to shelter up to 20,000 children and possibly parents at military bases in Texas and Arkansas. This morning, we but at the border in McAllen, Texas, today Afrin Olivares, a lawyer for the Texas Civil Rights Project, said parents have been calling him, frantic to find their children. It's, it's the same question, when am I going to see my child again? My Olivares says the government separated the families with no plan for how to reunite them later. So the children end up at a shelter with the Office of Refugee Resettlement. The parents are very likely at a nice detention facility. Those are two separate systems not designed to communicate with each other. So we're having to do on the fly, look, trying to locate the parents, trying to locate the children. Meanwhile, there's where the U.S. Attorney's Office in South Texas is dismissing cases against parents who are charged with illegally entering the country and were then separated from their children. At the same time, U.S. Customs and Border Protection has said it will continue to refer adults who cross the border illegally for prosecution. We have no reason to be proud of this. Across the country today, Democrats urged President Trump to rescind the zero tolerance policy. I call it a zero humanity policy. And on the floor of the House, Democrat Ted Lieu of California played a recording obtained by ProPublica. In it, children are heard crying after being separated from their parents. A standoff quickly ensued with Republican Karen Handel of Georgia. The gentleman will suspend Why are you rules, trying to prevent the American people rules from 17 of, what it of the like House in a prohibits facility. the use These are of that device. And kids in All of this comes as Republicans have pushed off a vote on a compromise immigration bill until next week. But this morning on Twitter, the president told Republicans to, quote, stop wasting time on immigration until after we elect more senators and congressmen and women in the November midterms. He went on to say, we cannot allow our country to be overrun by illegal immigrants, as the Democrats tell their phony stories of sadness and grief. That's likely to make it harder for GOP leaders to win the votes they need. The bill will already be facing tough opposition from those like Representative Lou Barletta of Pennsylvania. People are taking advantage, and every time you're talking about a pathway to citizenship or, or allowing people to come, you know what happens, more people come in. Thank you. My time has expired. But a fellow immigration hardliner, Representative Bob Goodlatte, says Congress is undeterred by the president's tweets today. He says lawmakers will keep working on a solution. Yamish is here now, with, along with our Capitol Hill correspondent, Lisa Desjardins, to talk about where all this is headed. Yamish, let me start with you. Have we gotten any more clarity today about how this executive order is going to be carried out? how these families are going to be reunited? Well, federal agencies and families that are trying to be re reunited are really facing a labyrinth of government bureaucracy. There's really no clear cut way that these families are going to be reunited. I was asking all day from the White House to the Department of Health and Human Services, which is in charge of reuniting a lot of these families. They told me that they just don't know. Um, it took a while to get answers today. Most people wanted to be radio silent on it. What we do know is that in some cases, when there are groups that are working with these families that have been separated in the past, even before 
President Trump became very vocal about it, it's usually taken two months to have a child once you actually locate their, their family member to go back into the home. The reason why there is that lag is because they're assessing whether the, the, the home is safe, whether the child is healthy. But I know of at least one case where two young boys have know where their mother is, and it's been eight months, they're still in foster care, and they said that there's complications with their case. But the idea is that these kids talk to their mother but cannot actually go and live with their mother. So essentially, we're, we're looking at a, a case where the federal government is in, is in really in chaos um, and there's no clear-cut answers. Government in chaos. Now, Lisa, we know that the, uh, the Pentagon is being asked to help house these families, but now we hear that their lawyers are being asked to help prosecute these cases. That's right. We have some good reporting from our Pentagon producer, Dan Segalen, who got from the Department of Defense today that it, the Secretary of Defense has approved sending 21 attorneys familiar with criminal prosecutions to help with these border cases. They made a point it's interesting in their response to him to say they will help with both misdemeanor and felony charges. That's because it's not really clear what the policy is right now, which way these cases are going to go. And as all this plays out, what's going on on the Hill? Is this <laughs> delay in the vote going to get them any closer to the two, 218 votes they want, they need? Republican leadership hopes so, but I have to tell you, John, from my many conversations today, not yet. And I don't think the president has helped things by saying, perhaps we just blow the whole thing off until, uh, until after November elections. We'll see. This weekend will tell us a lot. But what's happening more vigorously right now in Congress, two things, a series of letters going out to Health and Human Services from Democrats who are putting them out publicly and Republicans who are not, asking what is going on. Many of these senators have cases in their states they're trying to figure out what's happening to the families that, that are in their territory. They're not getting answers, including the committees that oversee health and human services. Also happening today, we're seeing a lot, Republicans and Democrats, go to these facilities. We're going to see many of these visits over the weekend. We're going to see protests from these members. All of this leading up to what may be the only action we see next week or not, that immigration vote. There's no date set for that. But it's important to sort of remind viewers what exactly is involved in that bill. These are the four pillars that the president had said he wanted. So just to remind people, at the top of that list is, of course, uh, the idea of a status for dreamers, those people who were brought here as children illegally, uh, money for the border wall, something the president says he eagerly wants, uh, a limit to extended family migration, and then an end to the visa lottery. Add to that now a fifth pillar, right, dealing with this child separation issue. In this bill, John, that may come for a vote or not next week, is important money, $7 billion to try and house these kids. If this bill doesn't pass, their fate is not clear, nor is it clear where the resources will come to house them. Yamish, these are the pillars, these are the principles that the president laid out earlier. Has there been any clear guidance from the White House what the president will accept, what he wants out of a bill, what he will sign? I just got off the phone with a White House source who told me that the president would support whatever bill the Republicans pass, if, if, that, if there is a bill that can be passed in, in the House. The problem is that he's tweeting his frustration because he doesn't believe that any bills can pass the Senate. He's really frustrated with the Republican slim majority in the Senate. They also tell me that if this bill fails, that what the president wants next is a bill that deals with a federal court decision that limits very strictly how immigrant children can be detained. He, it's called the Flores Central Settlement. We've talked about it a bunch on the show, but essentially it's saying that kids really need to be detained in very humane circumstances. The president wants a law that would change that. Today was also important because the president went out and kind of went back to his base. He went back to his roots of really criminalizing immigrants. He had a, an event at the White House where he had these family members who had lost loved ones who were killed by undocumented immigrants. And what he was doing there was really pitting the question, are you on the side of these families who he said were permanently separated from their kids, or are you on the side of the kids that are caged that might be temporarily separated? He ran on America first, but today was really him taking a, a, a big step forward and saying, are you with the, these American families? families or with these immigrant families? And it's a question, of course, that's unanswerable for most people. Uh, Yamiche Alcindor, Elisa Desjardins, excuse me. Thank you very much.